Don't think you've mistaken the channel. Despite the abundance of cola on the table, we are still about great sound and cars. By the way, I don't drink it and I don't recommend it to you. You think our hero with 800 watts in Class D will have enough power to break a wall made of empty cans with its sound pressure. And even full ones. How about extinguishing a lighter's flame by expelling air from the ports of the base reflex? Will this Chinese subwoofer be able to surpass the top American one, the SVS PB 2000 PRO, which dominated its segment till it left Russia due to sanctions? Can they really make serious base machines in the Celestial Empire for relatively little money? Be sure to watch the video to the end and you will find answers to all these questions. And most importantly, you will see its internals as the dissection will show who is really cool and who is not. And of course, for our crazy experiments, we will need earplugs that protect our ears by up to 37 dB, so be careful with the volume, friends. Any self-respecting audiophile loves good bass one way or another. If in music it can, and should be properly obtained from the front speakers, then in movies, you can't do without a powerful subwoofer at all. That is why in any multi-channel track, even the oldest ones like 5.1, this one means that the bass is written as a separate audio part, which would be foolish not to utilize. I always advise not to skimp on a bass machine because with proper placement and adequate power, low frequencies will add colossal depth in films and music, making almost any track richer and more vibrant. A pretty decent box, right friends? Weighing 33 kilograms. By the way, its American alter ego, the PB2000 Pro, weighs 3.5 kilograms less. An amazing fact is that the American model has a power of 550 watts, RMS, and 1500 watts peak, while our hero has 800 watts, RMS, and over 3500 watts peak. Ah, if only there were an additional 1500 watts, the Chinese would reach the best subwoofer of all time the SVSPB16 Ultra, which simply has no competition up to a million rubles. Just a moment, Ton Wiener might refer to the SVD8000, which also has an RMS of $1,500. Its RMS is also $1,500. But that's a completely different story, friends. Before we dive inside, I want to talk about its key advantages. Specifically, the cast aluminum frame of the speaker is maximally sturdy to prevent vibrations from distorting the low frequencies. A 65 mm voice coil wound with oxygen-free copper wire, providing high thermal resistance and durability. A dual magnet that will indeed help withstand very long loads at high power. 7-band parametric equalizer for professional tuning and phase switching, Euro 180. By the way, I think the Chinese have slightly missed the mark here. The engineers at Ton Winner could have followed SVS's approach, where the phase can be adjusted more precisely. And most importantly, our monster can handle the lower limit of 16 Hz. Exactly the same is claimed by the SVS PB2000 PRO, which by the way is significantly more expensive by about 50,000 plus or minus, and even more in some stores. Well, enough of the lyrics, let's watch and test, so to speak, thoroughly. The finish is done very well, there's absolutely nothing to complain about. Yes, it's not piano lacquer, which attracts fingerprints and scratches and looks more premium, but nevertheless, the texture is felt to the touch and everything is very, very good. The speaker is powerful, as you know. 12 inch, the port of the bass reflex is one to two. Oh, deep as a black hole, Lord. You know, like in horror movies, you put your hand in there and some entity tries to grab you and pull you in. The essence of the deepest bass, probably, if only. The grills, of course, are not magnetic because they would just be blown away by the gust of wind created by this powerful speaker. By the way, now we will see if this device can destroy these cans of cola or not, but that's a bit later. Notice that the edges are rounded. For what purpose? I explained that the vibrations created in this enclosure are significantly better damped. Almost all manufacturers of cool subwoofers and audio systems have come to the conclusion that you can't have such straight edges. It's bad, friends. It has a very negative effect on the acoustics. Of course, in an ideal scenario, it would be better if it were more rounded, but that is all expensive as the enclosure takes up a significant part of the product's budget. But this solution shows that the engineers at Stone Winner care about great sound. Oh, those Chinese. Oh, what tricksters. When my employees took it out of the box, I was 
shocked because I thought they had set it up wrong as the screen was upside down. And only then did I realize that the clever engineers thought about us. The people who usually get in head first and see the screen upside down. Very convenient, friends. What else can I say? I take my hat off. The connection is completely minimalist. These are the LFE linear inputs and, of course, the balanced input. It is also symmetrical. And another nice little detail is the switch for 2 on 20 and 1 on 10. So no step-down transformers are needed. Let's try to take out the speaker and see how everything is arranged inside. A special thanks to the engineers for the bolts, as they are of the highest quality and long. Look at this speaker. First of all, it's very heavy. Secondly, it's excellently made. And thirdly, the basket is really cast, of the highest quality for this money. Well, it's good. What can I say? Well done. Just well done. Now let's take a look inside, friends. And we will see that there are braces and uh, first, second. You see, in the distance is the Class D amplifier, which looks very, very similar to the SWSP B16 Ultra from Sabo, which is okay, seven, eight times more expensive than our hero. Let's start the experiment. So earplugs, where would we be without them? Just afraid that my eardrums might get damaged because of this. Monsters. Remember how Boris the Blade in the movie Snatch used these same things before punishing the Afro-Americans? Well, here's the first part. First, we place the empty cans. If he blows them away, then we place the full ones. First, we place the empty cans, emptied hipsters with our cola. Friends, test from 10 hertz. One zero in favor of Ton Wiener, although I had no doubt about his coolness. What did you think? Please write in the comments. But we still have round two. We place the cans filled with cola, friends. Round two. What a twist. Lee low frequencies. How they mangled those cans of cola. Third round. Music against fire. What if you move your hand further away? Let's try. What if you move it a meter away? Will it really blow away? Let's see. For a hundred and a few coins, this is just an incredibly cool sub. A base machine of dreams. What can I say? Highly recommend. Ton winner. Once again, respect. 